Welcome ladies and gents, Chris Andre here. You can find me at Bet Boxing on Twitter for boxing related tweets. Wow, what a fight, what a fight. That is why we love boxing. What we saw tonight, that was a heavyweight classic. Um, 41 year old Vitaly Klitsch, uh, Vladimir Klitschko looking to further extend his legacy, his greatness. You know, there's no doubt about it. This guy's a top 10 heavyweight of all time. He's past his best, but still exceptional. Um, We'll talk about all that in a second. Uh, in terms of analysis, in terms of the way the fight went, I was very, very happy. I picked out on a whole bunch of stuff, which we'll talk about in a minute. But in terms of the actual betting side of stuff, it went completely wrong for me. I had Vladimir, I had um, Anthony Joshua to win the fight in the first six rounds, with uh, with um, Klitschko to win the fight in the last six rounds, and then the main bet, you know, the big bet of just Vladimir Klitschko to win. It didn't go my way, did it? Um, but listen, it was it was an incredible, an incredible um, fight. It was just a joy to watch. This is the reason we're boxing fans. <clears throat> we'll start with the analysis. In terms of the analysis, I've put on the At Bet Boxing page on Twitter, I've put on um, three photographs that I took just to show you something. Because in the preview video, I spoke about how Vladimir Klitschko has this Thai boxer type stance at times where his arms are out, out ahead of him. And as you throw a hook, He'll put his arms out and you'll, you'll catch, he'll, he'll dip his head down and you'll catch him on the outside of his arms. Now, when he's doing it and he's coming off of the shoulder, he looked exceptional. He looks exceptional. You know, you have a jab will come in and then you'll try to follow up with a right hand and he's throwing that arm out and he's moving away at an angle and coming out. It's very difficult to get over it and land the shot you need to land. Impossible, pretty much. That's why even when AJ was very active early in the fight, he couldn't land. In terms of skill set, you could see how superior Vladimir Klitschko was in terms of skill set. However, what we also saw was, like I said in the preview, the key punches with the Vladimir Klitschko left hook, which he hurt Anthony Joshua with on a few occasions, um, but also the Anthony Joshua right uppercut. And the reason is because when Vladimir is caught square on and he does that same method of blocking, he throws his arms up and dips his head down. And by doing that, he's covering his head in terms of hooks, but he leaves himself open to an uppercut. And that right uppercut is what caused the damage. And I've taken three photographs, you know, sort of like a split second apart each one, just so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm going to try and make a collage of them and make them as the the uh, sort of preview picture to this video. But you can see it on the at Bet Boxing Twitter page. And you can see those shots. And that's exactly what I was talking about. And I was talking about how that is potentially hugely problematic for someone like Vladimir Klitschko. And indeed it delivered because in the 11th round, um, which is much later than I thought it would happen if it was going to happen for Anthony Joshua. That's it. it was the punch that caused the problem. There was a, a straight right hand right at the beginning of the round. Both of them were coming out and throwing lead right hands early in the round. Initially, it was Klitschko that was doing it. Then AJ sort of started to do it back to him. And it was that shot that caused some issues. And Vladimir wobbled, but he survived. And he moved away and he survived. And really, it was that right uppercut later on in the round which really started the ball rolling to end the fight. Personally, I thought the the, the stoppage was a bit premature. Um, uh, Josh, um, who who was it? Was it was it Kelly? I think there's another profiler who I've retweeted as well who came out and said that he thought it was premature. Basically, forget the two knockdowns. Just look at because they happened before. You're talking about the actual stoppage itself. You'll see that Vladimir Klitsch goes up against the ropes and Anthony Joshua is letting his hands go. And you can see everything's coming off the arms. He's even got the know-how to just you know deflect the shot. One jab did land, but really he was comfortable. And so it was really a premature stoppage at that point, in my opinion. Um, and it's a shame, really. But I mean, most ludicrous is the fact that the scorecards had Anthony Joshua. Two of the judges had Anthony Joshua two rounds ahead. That's ludicrous. I'm sorry. You know, AJ's brilliant. He's he's proved himself. He's a world class heavyweight. Um, but he was not two rounds ahead. Okay, he was not ahead. Um, bear in mind, you're not including the knockdowns in that final round. Okay, it's the the scores at the end of the tenth. So, in other words, if if Vladimir Klitschko had gone down, and that was a 10-7 round, and then he survives that, you're going to have two of the judges having AJ five rounds ahead with one round to go. That's ludicrous. No way was the fight like that. So anyway, the way I scored it, because there's always going to be somebody who's going to ask questions about scorecards. And before we go more into technical analysis again, um, I had the first, after four rounds, I had it 2-2. Two, two. So it was AJ, Vlad, AJ, Vlad for me. Then AJ had the 10-8 round, then Vlad had the 10-8 round, round. So after six rounds, I've got him level. Then you saw Vladimir Klitschko start to control to get the fight with a jab. Um, you know, seven and eight, he won with a jab, in my opinion. Seven, he, he won well. The eighth, he won with a jab. 
This is where a younger Vladimir Klitschko, the Vladimir Klitschko that fought Chagaev, that fought Pulev, you know, if you want to go, you know, Tony Thompson, any one of these guys would have won this fight tonight because he wouldn't have slowed down in the ninth. I thought that AJ nicked the ninth round on activity, but AJ was still heavy. You saw that. I explained in the preview video. He built, fill, fill up with lactic acid. He would slow down. We saw that. He, it, we saw him slow down. We saw him struggle to lift his arms at points, and he was eating some shots. Um, but what you saw was Vladimir Klitschko also not able to capitalize. He wasn't able to to get his feet going. Sorry, to, to get that jump pumping followed by right hands. You know, at times he was just leaping in with left hooks because he himself looked tired. He was just looking for that one punch knockout, almost like David Hay was doing against Tony Bellew at times. Um, a younger Vlad, I think, would have put Anton Joshua away. Vlad did win the tenth though, and I thought that Vladimir Klitschko was in control. I thought by that point, in other words, he's he's a couple of rounds up. Um, with two to go, so the best AJ could hope for, hope for was a draw unless he got a knockdown. So when that knockdown came, I thought, oh, the first one came, I thought, oh, it's going to be interesting now because he's got the momentum. He's going to nick this. He's going to win this, potentially. But to see those scorecards, you know, you, you have to understand, Deontay Wilder was purring on the commentary, talking about the event. He's never experienced anything like it. He was saying, hands down, English... British uh, boxing fans are the best in the world. Nobody hosts fights like this. You know, I really want to experience this. I want to come over. Gabriel Rosado is the one that contacted Eddie Hearn and wanted to come and fight Martin Murray. And you saw what the scorecards were saying there. You're seeing this then again tonight. We're going to scare away elite fighters from wanting to come to the UK. The UK is the place to be. No one does the events like we do now for boxing. That's just how it is. That's just the reality. If we start scoring it like this consistently, you're going to scare fighters away. It has to stop. It has to stop. Klitschko was winning that fight. Even if you had it close, I get it. But to have AJ two up, you know, in round 11, I don't see how that happens. I really don't. Anyway, um, back to the fight itself. So in terms of analysis, the way it went, I felt very comfortable with it. I saw what AJ was going to struggle with before the start of the fight. He did struggle with all that. I saw what Vladimir would struggle with. He did struggle with all that. It was just the timings, I guess, that were different. And I think that one limitation really came to, to bite Vladimir. And I think, you know, like I said, when you talk about analysis from a technical perspective, if I was, say, part of Anthony Joshua's training camp, I would have been happy with my analysis. I would have spotted something that is a weakness for AJ that he could have worked on, and I would have spotted stuff on Vladimir Klitschko, which was a weakness that he ended up capitalising on. And vice versa, if I was in Vlad's corner, I would have been happy with a report I would have compiled. I would have said, look, Vlad, you know, rather than having your hands out, when you're hurt and you're square on, you got to alter your arms a little bit. You know, if you want to protect your temples and dip your head, because clearly he does, he's not, you know, he's not 100% comfortable if he can't tie up. Have one hand lower and one hand up and dip downwards that way you're protecting from hooks and you're also protecting from an uppercut from below you know work on that in in training you know creating that with and put your forehead on his chest you know so it, you're in trouble drop your hands there and drop your forehead on his chest it creates a scenario where he, he, he can't really you know walk into him with your forehead on his chest there isn't much to hit what that does do is leave you more open to body shots but with that position you're open to body shots anyway you know if you're leaning forward and pushing a guy back he can't really maybe create the leverage for body shots there's no such thing as covering your entire... Your arms aren't long enough to cover every part of you. So, you know, you're going to leave a gap somewhere. But at least protect that chin. We know he can take shots to the body. Protect that chin. Um, so from that perspective, I'm happy with that. What I'm not happy with, obviously, is the way I bet the fight. I had a terrible night financially, but what an amazing experience uh, for us as boxing fans. There's a contract. There's a clause in the contract to make this, the fight happen again. I would love to see it again. Now... In all aspects of life, you have to understand whenever you're hearing anything, whether you're watching the news and you're hearing about a conflict, try and listen to the opposing argument always in your life. You know, listen to, to news agencies from other countries, listen to news agencies from wherever, because the fact of the matter is people that have got uh, an interest in something are going to be biased whether they like it or not. And this applies to sport. So when you've got guys like Tony Bellew, who are friends with Anthony Joshua, who are coming out at the end of the fight and saying things like, um, this is the best Vladimir Klitschko in the last six years. I've never seen him perform like that. You haven't seen him perform like that because you didn't think he could do it. Vladimir Klitschko has always been amazing. Prior to the stoppage, when he was in control in the seventh and eighth round, I can't remember which one, it was around that period of time, Carl Froch comes out and says, Bear in mind he's ringside, because a lot of these fighters in, in the West, we have not appreciated the Klitschko brothers. Like I've said, for me, Vitaly's in the top five. He's arguably the best. Um, and I'll explain, I'll elaborate on that in a moment. And Vladimir's potentially top five. He's top 10, for sure. 
So you're talking about world-class heavyweight, but they've never really been respected like that in the West, in America and the UK. So they've always been, oh yeah, they're robotic, they're this, they're that. They thought AJ was going to come in and blow him away with his youth. When they see that that's not happening, suddenly, and they're sitting ringside, suddenly they start to see different things. So you hear Carl Froch turn around and say, who's sitting ringside, have you ever seen, he's 41 years old, he's a heavyweight, look at his footwork, look how light he is on his feet and his upper body movement. Have you ever seen that from a heavyweight? Has it ever been done ever? So he's questioning whether any heavyweight has got feet as good as Vladimir Klitschko's. Okay, but... Prior to that, and listen, Carl Froch is amazing. I'm not criticizing Carl Froch. I'm just talking about generally the outlook of the of, of us Brits, of us Westerners when we're looking at the Klitschkos. Prior to that, no one was talking about Vladimir Klitschko. In that regard, what we had to wait till he was 41 to notice that his feet were light. If you go back far in my videos, you'll see that, you know, there have been other brilliant online analysts who have always criticized Vladimir Klitschko's feet. And if you go far back enough, you'll find that. I explained that the reason that Vladimir Klitschko was able to beat David Hay was precisely because of this. Because David Hay is this light heavyweight, you know, cruiserweight, fast, very explosive athlete, trying to close the range to get inside and land those shots. And Vlad was so fast on his feet and coming out from an angle that you can't close the range on him. His feet were excellent. The reason he couldn't, you know, he came unstuck against Fury, which is also a guy, remember, that I called from years ago. I said that Fury would be the guy to dethrone him. The reason he struggled with that is not just because of height, because against Marius Vaki looks sensational. It's not Klitschko did. It's not just height. It's that ability of Fury to offset Vlad's great footwork with his own great footwork. And additionally to that, he does have the additional advantage of being uh, long in terms of reach. But even then, there were times where Vlad was coming into range and not letting his hands go. Why? Because Fury, not only does he move brilliantly with his feet, he's got a lot of elusive upper body movement, just like Vlad, Vlad's got a lot of that sort of, you know, rolling upper body movement. So Fury stylistically was wrong for Vladimir Klitschko. You see someone like Anton Joshua, just like I explained in the preview, he'd be all right on his feet. He wouldn't be too luck, too um, heavy on his feet like people thought, but he's a little bit stiff in the upper body. That's the difference. Fury doesn't have that. Fury is very fluid in the upper body. Um, and that's why Vlad struggled. It's not because he doesn't have great feet. His feet are exceptional. Okay. Um, the other thing that I also want you to, to sort of consider are the scorecards. Oh, sorry. I've, I've discussed that, haven't I? Sorry, not the scorecards. The, um, um, the rematch, the potential rematch. There's a clause in a contract for a rematch. Um, I don't think Vlad's going to come back. Um, you know, he was hashtag obsessed. You know, that was the phrase. Um, it's going to be very difficult to get back into that frame of mind. Having said that, if there's any man who can do it, you're going to have to think it's Vlad. Because you have to understand, Vladimir Klitschko, his first ever fight with Manny Stewart, he got knocked out. So he gets knocked out, he comes back, and you're thinking, okay, he's going to sort his career out now. This is the return. This is the last hurrah. And on the last hurrah, he gets knocked out. You know, And then after that, he continued to believe in himself. Vitaly was begging him to retire. And he continued, and he became one of the great heavyweights. You know, that post, from 2006 onwards, that Samuel Peter fight, something changed in him. It was that belief that I can get dropped, I can get up, and I can go and win a fight. And we saw that today. He got knocked down in the fifth, he got up, and he won the rest of the round. It's still a 10-8 round, but he won the rest of the round. And then and, and a lot of it was down to the fact that AJ was trying to get him out of there, and he built up this, you know, lactic acid and became heavier and what have you. But in the seventh, Vlad continues to dominate and drops him. Okay, so you're talking about an exceptional heavyweight who who is a legend, and um, if I'm him, I'm going for the rematch. I, I will, you know, gas my head enough to the point because I, I know now that I made a stupid error. There are things I can work on defensively, but I could beat AJ, and AJ can potentially go on to achieve huge things. And if I do beat AJ and then I get at Fury, great, right? If I can beat Fury, my legacy is cemented. But even if I don't, even if I only beat AJ, and AJ goes on to achieve incredible things. Think about what that says about my legacy. Okay, so if I'm Vladimir Klitschko, I want that one last fight. Whereas if he loses the rematch to AJ, people are going to say, okay, he was 41 years old. He lost his last three fights. He wasn't anywhere near his best. He'll never get the credit he really deserves because he's never had it up to this point. But the fact of the matter is, you, you're not really going to taint his legacy among hardcore boxing fans. Do you see what I'm saying? So for me, he has to take it if he can motivate himself enough. Um, and he could potentially win the rematch. It's, it, listen, it was a brilliant fight. Um... Great shot selection from Anthony Joshua um, in the end to win the fight. He showed a lot of heart, a lot of a lot of determination. Um, I don't think he's as skilled as Vladimir Klitschko, just like I said in the preview video. But you know, sometimes athleticism, heart can can drag you through. And it's just a terrific event, a terrific fight. Um, there's so much talk now. Listen, I've always said the heavyweight division is arguably the most in-depth division in the sport. It is 
filled with terrific fighters. Vladimir Klitschko, both Fury brothers, uh, cousins, um, Anthony Joshua, Joseph Parker, uh, Alexander Povetkin if he returns, Kubrat Pulev, Deontay Wilder, uh, Andy Ruiz Jr. You know, it's filled with excellent, excellent fighters. There are quality fighters in this division. It is stacked. There are still so many names I haven't spoken about. It's a stacked division and it's flying and, you know, it's a joy to watch. Luis Ortiz and so on and so forth. So hopefully we can continue to see some of these huge fights now. Um, and hopefully, hopefully this isn't the end of Vladimir Klitschko. He showed enough tonight. Um, I think he deserves he deserves to be remembered in a better way. You know, uh, hopefully we, this isn't the end. But if he is, you can't begrudge him. Thanks anyway, guys. Let me know what you thought. Um, I also did get one lovely tweet from a a guy who's uh, at JR three hundred five Miami. And he wrote, you're 100% right on that. In other words, on the uppercut, you should be a boxing trainer. Uh, listen, thanks. I appreciate the, the kind words. A lot of you have been sending really nice tweets. It takes a lot more than just sort of technical knowledge, though, to be a trainer. You know, it takes a lot more. I'd love to, I've said before, I'd love to do it as part of a training team. I'd love to be able to shadow an experienced trainer, learn a few things, a few more things, and then one day take on my own fighter. Why not? But um, to just step in a ring now and go and train a step in a circle now and just go and train a top class fighter. It's, it's, I've still got a lot to learn. But thank you for the kind words. Please continue to watch. Please subscribe if you can. Let other people know about the videos. You know, if you if you really like them and you know other boxing fans and hardcore boxing fans, let them know. See if you know we can get this debate going on a bigger scale. And hopefully we've had a brilliant, brilliant period, haven't we? Betting wise, hopefully it can continue and get back on track next week because today obviously wasn't a great day. Thanks very much. Take care.